everyone and welcome to episode one of our collaboration. I'm Astrid of Unique Astrid and this is the fabulous Kai of Fiber by Nature. Hi. Uh, in this project we are going to see what we can do with our fabulous fiber from the Ashfords and um, we're just gonna see what we can do with it with some simple guidelines that we have set um, which we're gonna dive into all of that today. Um, but uh, first, Kai had something to say, right? Okay, so um, we're going to be posting every weekend on, so on the weekend on uh, my YouTube, uh, and Astrid's going to be posting on every weekend on her Facebook and Instagram. So make sure that you're following us on face on well, following her on her Facebook and Instagram, and me just Instagram and YouTube if you're not subscribed. Yep, so we'll be posting the video pretty much everywhere every weekend. And we'll also do our own little updates on our pages with just some photos and things that we've uh, been working on and that kind of thing. So, yep, be sure to follow to keep uh, seeing our adventures and share our experiences through this fabulous project. So I just wanted to share the simple guidelines that we set for ourselves. Um, so basically... Um, we are going to take, like we said, this uh, Ashford fiber. This is half a kilo or 1.1 pounds. Um, and we're going to take it and go from spun all the way to a finished project. And we're going to take you through all the dyeing and spinning and weaving and all of that exciting stuff. And yeah, so that'll be all in this, I don't really know how many episode series, uh, that we'll be working on. So um, we took, we picked out of a hat, um, it's really a bowl, um, but we picked out of, uh, we picked our certain dye colors. So Kai ended up with yellow and black, kind of like a bumblebee, and I ended up with a, a purple and pink. And then we also decided to uh, throw in there an optional uh, orange. So. If we want to use it, we can, uh, we don't have to, but it just adds a bit more possibilities to what we can do with this. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, let's see, uh, I have written on here, no carters of any kind. So um, okay. pretty much we just spin up the fiber as is. Um, we are allowed to dye it at any point of the process, mm -hmm. um, but we both chose to, uh, dye it after it's been spun and before we leave with it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, no carters, no cones. Yeah, no blending. Just leave it like this because it's already a blend. Yep. Um, any kind of looms allowed. So I know Kai's gonna combine his looms in some fun way that he can do some parts on some looms and <laughs> I will probably, uh, pick one of my floor rooms and do the mm -hmm. um let's see so we are allowed to uh allowed to instead of rules i keep saying allowed to um we can use other yarns from the warp we wanted to stick to protein fibers only so any kinds of wools this is uh also a silk blended into it um and so we can use uh, other wools for the warp uh, it seems fair because, you know, you need a strong yarn for the warp. And if you choose to only spin up singles, it's not fair if you have to take the time to apply extra if, you know, that wasn't what you wanted. It seems just unfair. So uh, we are allowed to use other yarns for the warp, like any commercial, mm -hmm. or as long as it's wool. And um, we can also throw in hand spun whenever we want. So any other hand spun mm -hmm. our stash. Or whatever, um, as long as it's the color tones that we have heard set. Yeah. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, any draft, as long as it is two shafts. Um, so pretty much plain weave. Um, because Kai yep. has a, a Erica table loom that is only two shafts, and mm -hmm. so it seems fair that we, you know, have to yeah. two shafts. Although I, we did say that if I wanted, I could always do double weave, but. We'll see. Yeah, I'm not. But sure. also, yeah. this is more on me because I know how to do it. You are also allowed to do like uh things where you, for example, you for my want to put in like 
a an extra wet warp thread like where you use like your weft you insert like a like a separate uh hand spun or whatever yarn that's protein and uh that's in the colored range you can also uh weave that in a little bit and then you can also hang it off the back if you want or you can also do a uh, Brocade motifs, which is more on my side because that's more of my thing. So it can be class weft, it can be inlay, it can be anything, as long as pretty much it's stuck to your two shirts. So uh, those are the rules. I know it's a lot of rules, but it seems like a lot of fair rules and made the most sense. So we thought it would be fun to try and do this little challenge. Um, Kai, you want to share what kind of fiber we're using? Yes, so we are using Ashford's uh, vanilla, which is merino, silk, and alpaca, though uh, Ashford has somehow ended up with merino silk, and I got merino silk alpaca. But there is only a small percentage of alpaca, I believe, so it doesn't make much of a difference. Um, but other than that, um, yeah, we're there's at least two of the same fibers in there, just missing one. Yeah, we ordered from the same link, and I don't know if it was from an Etsy shop so that we could support a small business, that small business, sorry. Uh, but um, somehow I, I ended up with Merino Silk and Kai got Merino Silk Alpaca. It doesn't make a huge difference. It still sticks mm -hmm. to protein fibers. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's I'm sure it's a small percentage mm -hmm. of alpaca. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make a huge difference to us. And if you want to follow along, we will link the fiber in the uh, description and the rules. And you can also uh, post uh, and you can also send us photos and we would love to see what you guys create. Yep. So, um, yeah, just like I said, feel free to follow along. Um, so now we're kind of just going to hang out and spin and do a little bit of the process. Um, we're both using our e-spinners. Kai has a Nano. I've got an Ashford e-spinner three. Um, and we also decided to, it came as a pretty wide comb top. We decided to split it up quite a bit. Um, I mean, we both learned on roving. So it's, you know, it comes thinner when you get roving and um, it makes it easier to spin thin. It makes it easier to spin in general. And so that's kind of what we're used to. So we're, we spit, strip, uh, stripped it up. Mine kind of came out as like five strips per piece of roving. I think Kai's getting around six. So similar, but you know, thin enough that we can still create a really nice yarn. Mm -hmm. So while we're spinning, Kai, do you want to share a bit about what you're going to do with yours? Yeah, something happened and the fiber got stuck and now my spinning wheel is not spinning. I'm doing a short forward draw. Kai does more of a woolen draw. I do have a more woolen draw only because that's, I started off as a, um, on the spindle I was and I was working with a uh, wool that drafted apart easily. So I started uh, drafting woolen. Um, so um, we kind of just stuck to what we're good at um, because we're comfortable at that and we know we can keep it as consistent as we know we can with what we're good at. So that's, I mean, it just seems to make a lot of sense. So, but uh, I think we're both getting really nice yarn so far by doing that. So. Well, I'll share some of my goals, with, uh, or my sort of end goal with, with you guys while Kai's working on that. Um, so mine, I, I'm never entirely sure. I tend to change slightly before weaving. Um, but I think so far, I think I'm going to, um, make a romper of some kind. I found a pattern that is, um, that uses slightly heavier wools, uh, or fabrics, sorry, um, instead of just like lightweight cottons and that type of thing. So, and I am hoping to get still uh, a nice lightweight fabric and drapey fabric with this, uh, even though it is wool. Um, so I'm gonna do, uh, I think for the bottom, a uh, hand-painted warp um, using some Jaeger spun uh, merino. I have some leftover purple and orange from another project. And um, 
I think I'm going to make part of the orange uh, pink so that it's got a sort of hand painted dwarf aspect to add some depth to the plain leaf. And then um, I love speckled yarns. So I'm going to do, I'm going to ply up a bit or part of the yarn and uh, make the top uh, a speckled yarn using the colors that I have uh, or that I have set. So um, that's the goal. I really, I, I've been wanting to do hand painted works for a while and I just love the look of speckled and I've also seen them used together sometimes. So I'm hoping it should come out nicely. So you get it fixed that time? Almost. Okay. I don't know what happened, you guys. So I think there got fiber stuck in the motor or something. Um, so like it wasn't spinning, but now it's working. Well, that was weird. Of course, it had to happen when we were filming. Delightful. That's okay. You're really good at troubleshooting. So I'm sure it Yeah. Works. I got it fixed, I think. You are definitely more resourceful. My version of resourceful is to buy it for you. So, yeah, I think our yarns are definitely spinning up really nicely. It's going to take a while to spin up with pound of fiber because we're little, very, fairly slow spinners. So, mm -hmm. so but hi. Your bobbin is a two ounce bobbin. Yeah, but it's a ounce. very, yeah, mine is a two ounce bobbin. So it'll take a little bit more to spin up. And uh, when I'm warping the loom, it'll be a little bit uh, harder because um, only because I have to, I'll be constantly tying new bobbins on or warp threads, whatever you want to call it. And because I have less amount, whereas when Astrid, uh, doing it i think she's also going to use her commercial yeah um basically um when i warp my loom because i'm not going to use any commercial yarn except i think i might do some inlaying stuff um but we'll see it'll take a little bit longer mm -hmm. so but yeah kai has a small bobbin so if you're looking in comparison Mine's an eight ounce bobbin and Kai's is a two ounce bobbin. So um, progress wise, we started at about the same time. So, but I mean, we're not spinning at the same time constantly. So um, Kai could spin days before me uh, or finish days before me and, or I could finish days before him. I mean, we'll just see. And we'll just take work on it on our own time. It's not a competition. Okay, I just need to thread my uh the little loops on on my uh on the thing. Yeah. Well, this is a very soft fiber, um. So I, we can definitely see the merino part of it. Um, the silk gives it a little bit of sheen, but not too much to make it like very shimmery. Um, and it also gives a little bit of. Well, like smoothness, I don't know how to describe it, but you can definitely see the uh, different, tell that there's the different types of fibers in there. Yeah, it's and also, it'll be a fun experiment when we're dyeing it because uh, uh, fibers take dyes up differently. So it will be an experiment to see the variation of color in our projects. Yeah, I was thinking I might, uh, so usually when, I mean, at least when I work with silk, I usually pre-soak it for 24 hours because unlike wool, it doesn't accept the dye as it, or water as easily and it doesn't absorb things as easily. So that's why usually I pre-soak it for around 24 hours or overnight at least. Um, but I think I might not in this case because that in that way you'll get streaks of silk. Um, and I think the, that's always really gorgeous too. But I will say this is a lovely fiber. It's super lofty. Usually when you get comb top, um, it's going to be like super compact because it's been in the mail forever. And comb top does definitely have a habit of condensing. Um, 
like this is extremely lofty. It's super soft. I mean, this stuff is amazing. And um, it's it's really nice. I mean, that's why we chose Ashford. They have they have really great, great quality stuff. So now okay now I've, I've got it going i think it just needs a little bit more tweaking but you never your done yeah my project i think i'm just gonna just make a plain like shirt nothing big because um i don't i think yeah so i've got my thing working now uh so i'm just gonna be just weaving like a simple shirt but i'm gonna what I'm going to do is I'm going to resist dye it so that there's stripes going in my uh, in the finished product. So that will be fun. I got and also we will be uh, filming the dyeing process and weaving process. Yep. Uh, I also wanted to mention that Kai got uh, this nano for his birthday just a few weeks ago and I, I can he's been using it a lot so I can tell you love it. this project is it's perfect because I hopefully can get this done quickly yeah and it's great for travel like you can bring it to the beach because Kai goes to the beach a lot um and yeah you can bring it to the U.S. when you go to the U.S. It'll work very nicely for you. They are well made. They're affordable and well made. There's so many people who have nanos and love them. Yeah, that is um, that is the introduction to our, our little project. And um, a reminder, this will be going live every weekend. So make sure to have your notifications on so you get notified when every video of, on my YouTube comes out. So uh, thanks for joining. Hope you enjoyed and make sure you stay tuned for the next one and yep. follow us so you can get notified when it comes through. Mm -hmm. So yep, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. Bye.